How many of y'all know that there's nobody like the Lord? Old school gospel song asked the question, who is like the Lord? Nobody. And by nine o'clock sermon, I went old school for a second and I said, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. How many of y'all know can't nobody do me like Jesus? Can't nobody love you like the Lord can? If you have your Bibles today or your Bible apps, I'll be working out of Joshua chapter 22. Verses 1 through 8, Pastor Ray came to Nova Scotia, I think it was 2016, preaching Joshua, tore my house up. So you know what they say, it's okay to be a copycat as long as you copy the right cat. This is what the Word of God says. Then Joshua summoned the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh and said to them, You have done all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded, and you have obeyed me in everything I commanded. For a long time now, to this very day, you have not deserted your brothers, but have carried out the mission the Lord your God gave you. Now that the Lord your God has given rest to your brothers as he promised, return to your homes in the land that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you on the other side of the Jordan. Do me a favor, touch your neighbor and say the other side. The other side but be very careful to keep the commandment and the law that Moses the servant of the Lord gave you to love the Lord your God to walk in all his ways to obey his commandments to hold fast to him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul then Joshua blessed them and sent them away, and they went to their homes. To the half tribe of Manasseh, Moses had given land in Bashan, and to the other half of the tribe, Joshua gave land on the west side of the Jordan with their brothers. When Joshua sent them home, he blessed them. This is what he said. Return to your homes with your great wealth, with large herds of livestock, with silver, gold, bronze, and iron, and a great quantity of clothing, and divide with your brothers the plunder from your enemies. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated today in the house of the Lord. I may have spoken too quickly. Can y'all do me a favor and show some love for this great man of God by the name of <laughs> Reverend Dr. Ray A. Owens. Not only is Pastor Ray a tremendous, great, powerful preacher. He is an awesome and caring pastor. You do know that there is a difference, right? There is a difference between a great preacher and a great pastor, and God has blessed you, Metropolitan, with both a great preacher and a great pastor. 
to his pulpit staff. Thank you always for your hospitality and help. Uh, Merton, you bless me all the time. All the time you bless me. Dion, I, I told the nine o'clock that today was your birthday. And so I'm glad that they sang happy birthday to you today. Happy birthday. I've been here on Ray's birthday, but I've never been here on your birthday. So I pray that the Lord has this word just for you on your birthday. And who is this person? No, not the little person. The big person. It looked like Jordan, but, you know, this one looks a little, I don't know. <laughs> Good to see you, Jordan. And to you, the Metropolitan family, uh, some of you, this may be the first time, but I promise you, I'm just the brother that's been away, that's come back home. And so it's always good to see your faces in the place called the Met Church. I want to preach a little while today from the sermonic subject, home sweet home. Home sweet home. Have you ever just wanted to go home? You know, on Friday around 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and you know that if you're in school, the bell's about to ring, or if you are at work, you know, you're about to punch out, and you, you know what, I can't wait to get home. Have you ever just yearned for pulling into the driveway after a long day of work? You know those days when you say to yourself, I can't wait to get in the house. I can't wait to take these socks and shoes off. I can't wait to let down my hair or even take out my hair. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you're so tired. That's what I talked about the, in 9 o'clock. Go get the CD. You're so tired that you plop on the bed with your clothes on. You're just so happy to be home. Y'all know what I'm talking about, or is it just me? I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes I, I just want to be home. Listen, I don't want to have no conversation. I don't want to deal with the outside world. I don't want to have any more meetings. Don't call me. Don't text me. I just want to go home. Summer, or shall I say Dion, don't ask me to stop by the grocery store on my way home. I'm not stopping nowhere. I just want to go home. I just want to go home. There are times when I don't feel like dealing with the hustle and bustle. I just want to be home, y'all. See, there are things at home that you won't find anywhere else, no matter how nice it is. I remember growing up, and there was a brand of cookies called Almost Home. Do y'all remember Almost Home? Almost Home. They were some good cookies, but they were almost home. <laughs> No matter how many stars the hotel is, there is no bed like your bed. No matter how world-class the chef is, there is no meal like a home-cooked meal. You may visit a house that has seven bedrooms and seven bathrooms, but doesn't make it a home. Luther Vandross had it right when he said, a chair is still a chair even if there's no one sitting there and a chair is not a house and a house, y'all know that is not a home. In fact, Dorothy from The Wiz, not The Wizard of Oz, The Wiz, not The Wizard of Oz. She, I know I'm in Oklahoma, but I still rock with The Wiz, not The Wizard of Oz. Dorothy from The Wiz said, there's no place like home. And then there's that famous song from the sign, when I think of home, I think of a place where there's love over, y'all know this? I wish I was back there in your mind. Sometimes we just want to be home. Can I offer you another perspective from my life sometimes? Do you ever wanna go home? 
but could? Mm. In a month's time, we will salute all of the servicemen and women who have served in our country, assigned on duty, and, and they may want to go home sometimes, but they can't. There are people in the hospital, even right now, who need the care and services provided them in the hospital, but the truth is, the hospital ain't home. There are some people who left home for whatever reason, and maybe because of shame or guilt or whatever reason, and they want to come home, but they feel like they can't. And yet there are others, like myself, who because of their commitment to God, want to go home, but can't. As we turn our attention to the text this morning, uh, we see the, the, the tribe, the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh who have had from home. How do I know the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh have had to make a home away from home? I'm glad you asked. It's right there. The first clue is there in verse number four, if you still got your Bibles open. It says, now that the Lord your God has given them rest as he promised, return to your homes in the land that Moses, the servant of the Lord, God gave you on the other side of the Jordan. The second clue was in verse number six. Then Joshua blessed them and sent them away and they went to their home. The third clue, when Joshua sent them home, he blessed them saying, return to your homes. This passage is all about returning home. And the Lord is calling somebody under the sound of my voice home today. This story that ends in Joshua ends in Numbers 32 verses 17 and 18. It was there that the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh asked Moses if they could have land and settle on the east side of the Jordan. We'll come back to that in a minute. Listen to their request. Then they came up to Moses and said, we would like to build pens here for our livestock and cities for our women and children, but we will arm ourselves and go ahead of the Israel to their place. Meanwhile, our women and children will live in fortified cities for protection from the inhabitants of the land. We will not return to our homes until the Israelites have received their inheritance. We will not receive any inheritance with them because our inheritance has come to us on the east side of the Jordan. That's what worry with all that biblical knowledge, but what? this, that happened in Numbers 32. But the text that we read is Joshua 22. Uh, that's 61 chapters and seven years since they made this request. That's 61 chapters and seven years since they've been home. My point is this, you may have had to wait for some, may have been 20, uh, 61 chapters in your life over a period of seven years, but there is a coming a time when the waiting period is over. Uh, the old preacher used to say it like this, he may not come when you want him, but God is always right Oh, Y'all heard that too. Now, now I'll tell you the truth. I learned something studying for this message. I, I learned something studying this for years now, right? But you still can learn something when you open up the Word of God. Uh, Brother Gil, don't ever stop learning from the Word of God. This is what I learned. I learned that not all of the tribes of Israel settled on the west side of the Jordan. Now, that may not make any sense to you, but when I was a, a little one in primary and kindergarten class, they lumped all the real cross over the Jordan River, and everybody settled on the other side of the Jordan River, and they made it to the promised land. Y'all heard that before? All the tribes of Israel made it across the Jordan River uh, to the land flowing with milk and honey. And so my question is, y'all, why? 
Manasseh and Gad and, the, and Reuben asked to settle on the east side instead of the west side? Why, why would they ask Moses to settle on the east side of the Jordan when the promised land was on the west side of the Jordan? Why? And, and, and it came to me, it's because these tribes raised cattle and had a lot of cattle. And so they needed space, and the land east of the Jordan was space stock. The land is described in Deuteronomy 33, 13. Here it is. May the Lord bless his land with the precious dew from heaven above and with the deep waters that lie below, with the best the sun brings forth and the finest the moon can yield, with the choicest gift of the ancient mountains and the fruitfulness of the everlasting hills, with the best first fruits of the earth and the fullness of the favor. I don't know about you, but I didn't say anything that sounded like it wasn't good. And then it dawned on me, it dawned on me, Dion. I was surprised that they settled the east. I was, especially in light of the fact that the west side of Jordan is called the promised land and the land flowing with milk and honey. But then I remembered Psalm 24 is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and those and they that dwell therein. You missed your shout cue. Let me do it again. I was wondering why they wanted to settle on the east side of the Jordan, but then I remembered Psalm 24, verse 1, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and those and they that dwell up therein. It doesn't matter if you're on the west side of the Jordan or on the east side of the Jordan. It doesn't matter if you in Austin or Tulsa or New Jersey or Halifax, Nova Scotia, all the whole, I'm already into my first point, and my first point is home is where you hang your hat. Home is where you hang your hat. In other words, wherever God is blessing you, that's where home is. And God's blessing, they may not have settled the west, but they recognized that the land that God had on the east was blessed. Is there anybody here besides me who knows that the blessing is not just connected to a place, but the, uh, the blessing is connected to his presence. You're not getting what I'm saying. I don't have to be in the sanctuary to know that God is blessed. I'm in my office or when I'm playing golf or when I'm playing whatever, I say this song, the Lord is blessing me right now, right now. I could be driving in my car. The Lord is blessing me right now. I took three planes yesterday and the Lord is blessing me right now. Is there any? I don't have to be situated in my favorite seat in the sanctuary. Wherever I am, wherever the Lord is, I'm blessed as long as God is there. Can I get just one or two witnesses who can testify? As long as I got Jesus, I'm all right. David said it like this, Lord, do whatever you want to do with me, but please don't take your presence. Don't take your presence from me. How long you been here now? 11 years. And I remember the conversation that, that Pastor Owens and I was having, having uh, 12 years ago. And, it, and, and my story mimicked his story, so I'm going to tell you my story so I don't put him on front street. In 2011, 2012, in the first part of the year, when I told people that there was this church that had called me to be their pastor, people started asking me the question, are you sure you want to move all the way up there? Because God is blessing you right here in Brooklyn. You sure you want to go up there where them igloos are? That's, that's what, there's, there's no igloos. Don't be afraid. Don't be, don't be scared. There's no igloos. You, you sure you want to go up there with the Eskimos and the, and the glaciers? You sure you want to move all the way up there? But five years later, I, I know now the experience that I didn't know then, and, and that is home 
is where you hang your hat. Can, can I just tell you how I know uh, that God, well, that home is where you hang your hat? Because when I came to New Beginnings, there was a hundred and, a hundred and some. Uh, we grew like you grew. We had to get another service. And then the Lord put it on my spirit. Don't just limit it to services. Why don't you plant another location? And two weeks ago, we celebrated the first year of our second location. The Lord is blessing us. We started a community development center where we're going to do affordable housing and, and a school and a performing arts center. You're not hearing what I'm saying. I'm all, I'm all the way in Halifax, Nova Scotia. It takes me five planes just to get, uh, that's exaggeration, just to get to the United States. But I would not dare move where I am because the Lord has planted me and placed me in Nova Scotia. And wherever the Lord plants you and place you, he will put you there so that you can blossom because the Lord will bless you wherever you are. Home is where you hang your hat. Not only is home where you hang your hat, but Joshua 22 teaches me that charity begins at home. Charity begins at home. Look, 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 look at the verse for it says, for a long time now to this very day, you have not deserted the other Israelites, but have carried out the mission the Lord your God gave you. I'm loving this because even though they have established that their blessing is on the east side of the Jordan, and even though their women and children are already settled, the Bible says that they did not desert the other Israelites. This lets me know that home isn't just about a place, but home is also about your people. People nowadays think that home is just the place what I have or what I I work for what my property and my land and my cars and my watch but the text lets me know that you can have houses and land but if you don't have anybody to share with all your possessions don't mean not I can't say it how I want to say it but home is about a place but home is about your people and I don't care how big you get how much money you got in the bank how many degrees you have on the wall never forget your people it doesn't matter how many raises or promotions you attain. Never forget your people. It doesn't matter how many certificates or degrees you may earn. Never forget your people. We need to recognize that my inheritance is connected to your inheritance and your inheritance is connected to my inheritance. That's why if one of us is struggling with an issue, we all have an issue. You need to hear what I'm saying right now. It's not just about the Crutcher family. The Crutcher family is about our family. You're not getting what I'm saying. It's not just about Colin Kaepernick because Colin Kaepernick is just not my frat brother, but he's your brother because he looks just like you and your brother and your nephew and your uncle or maybe even your daddy. That's why I got to give a shout out to Jillian Owens who says, you know what? I'm going to call for everybody who goes to the Booker T game to take a knee because if I take a knee, I at least know that the Lord is going to hear me, even if Donald Trump don't hear me. It's about a people. We got to get over this. It's just about people in Tulsa or Oklahoma. And listen, we were all brought here pretty much the same way. We may have been disconnected in our relationship. You may not know where all your family is. But I came here to tell you that there's some people all the way in Nova Scotia that's your people. And the people in Nova Scotia need to know that they got some people in Tulsa that's their people. Listen, don't worry about mainstream media because they're not going to show Cuba. They're not going to show Haiti on the news. They might show Puerto Rico in the Dominican Republic, but they're not going to show people who look like us all the time. I came by to tell you that we are people all over the planet, and we have to learn that we're not just separated by geography, but God has connected us by the spirits. Charity 
begins at home. Shameless plug. When you leave out the sanctuary, there's a young man out there. He has some information about an organization doing something for some young brothers. Don't complain about the problem, but do something to fix the problem. Because those young boys that you complain about sometimes, that's your son, even if it's not your son. That's your nephew, even if it's not your nephew. Because charity begins at home. The next movement of the text says, home is where the heart is. The home is where the heart is. Joshua gives them a commendation in verse number three and four, uh, and he offers uh, exhortation in verse number five. This is what he says. I'm sending you home. You have fought valiantly. We could not have done it without you. But when you get home, be careful to keep all the commandments that the law Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you. And in case you weren't sure, these are the commandments to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, to keep God's commandments, to hold fast to him and to serve him with all of your hearts and with all of your soul. If you want to find where home is, uh, but if there, but if from there you seek the Lord your God, you will find him if you seek him with your heart and with all your soul. And when you are in distress and all these things have happened to you, then in later days you will return to the Lord your God and obey him. For the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not abandon or destroy you or forget the covenant with your answers. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your with all your mind and with all your soul. Watch this by implication. The Reubenites, Gadites, and half tribe of Manasseh have kept the commands of God the entire time while they were away from home. But since they honored the Lord and loved the Lord with their whole hearts, God was in their hearts. Let me say that again. Somebody needs to hear that. If you love the Lord and honor the Lord while you are away from home, as long as you honor the Lord, the Lord will always be in your heart. But now Moses is telling them, you fought the good fight. You ready, Merton? You finished the race. It's time for you to go home. That's my last point. And so I'm out like shout and gone with the wind, but my brothers and sisters of Metropolitan, it's time to come home. Joshua in verse 8 says, now return to your homes with great wealth, with large herds of livestock, with silver, with gold and bronze, with iron and fine clothing. It's time to come home. You can go home now because your brothers have found rest. It's there in verse number four. Now that the Lord your God has given them rest as he promised, they were wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, but now they can rest. They wandered for 40 years and they got lost, but now they can rest. They had some hills to climb, but now they can rest. They walked through the valley of the shadow of death but now they can rest they had some battles to fight and some wars to rage but now they can rest there was some walls that had to come tumbling down some strongholds that had to be broken but now they can rest. They made some mistakes along the way and took some missteps, but now they can rest. And since your brothers have found rest for their weary souls, uh, it's time for you to go home. Can I talk to somebody, some, somebody who's living the good life, who's living in the shade, drinking a glass of lemonade? Don't think that just because you are where you are that the work is done. There's some brothers and sisters who have not found rest, and until they get their rest, you cannot find your way home. Watch. Now, the Jordan River has symbolically also represented the division between heaven and earth. 
between the land of the living and the land of the dying. <laughs> the realm of earth and the realm of heaven. So this passage has at least two dimensions of blessings right here in the text. Uh, uh, okay, let me get it to you. Uh, one speaks of earth and one speaks of heaven. Now, now some of y'all felt a little uncomfortable earlier, probably when I said it's time to come home. And, and since the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh settled on this side of the Jordan, this lets me know that you don't have to think only about dying to be blessed. The God tells me through this text that we've got some blessings waiting for us right here on this side of the Jordan. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I came by to tell somebody, but there's grace on this side of the Jordan. There's joy on this side of the Jordan. There's happiness on this side of the Jordan. There's peace on this side of the Jordan. There's right relationship on this side of the Jordan. There are green pastures on this side of the Jordan. There's abundance and prosperity on this side of the Jordan. There's favor and forgiveness on this side of the Jordan. And God is telling somebody it's time to come home. You remember the, uh, the, the prodigal son or the prodigal daughter I'm talking to somebody to tell you it's time to come home there's a blessing on this side of the Jordan but there is a blessing waiting for us on the other side of the Jordan and I gotta close like this one glad morning when this life is over I'll fly away I'll fly away to a place on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away, I'll fly away. I came by to tell somebody it's time to come home. Home sweet home, where, the, where, the, where I have no more trouble, where I won't cry no more, where I won't get sickness in my body no more. Home sweet home, where the streets are paved with gold. Home sweet home, where they sing in harmony every time. Home sweet home, and they sing holy, holy, holy. The whole earth is full of his glory. Home sweet home. I don't know about you, but I want to see my Jesus. I want to see his face. I want to sit at the banquet table. I want to get to the gate and say, welcome home, Spivey. You've made it. Home sweet home. <laughs>